Hello again everyone, Sir Gantlot here, back with part 3 in our series of videos looking at earned value management. In this part we'll be looking at how we can forecast to the end of our project and determine where we're going to come in in terms of schedule and cost. We're going to calculate estimate at complete, estimate to complete, variance at completion and the to complete performance index. In our first part of this series, we looked at the basic concepts of earned value, how we can derive planned value, earned value, and actual costs from a particular scenario. We then use that information to calculate variances and performance index values. How are we doing in terms of cost and schedule against our original plan? Now we're going to look ahead and see what all that means for the end of our project. What is it going to cost us and how long is it going to take? So a reminder then, we looked at how we can derive planned value, actual costs, and earned value. What we're going to do now is look at that uh, original plan for the end of the project, our planned value for the end of the project, also known as the budget at completion, and see what happens if we project forward our earned value. We'll see that we, if we carry on with a similar trajectory, we're not going to get to that level of value until somewhat later than we had originally planned. Our estimate at completion for duration, our forecast for the duration of the project, is going to be longer than the original end date was. Likewise, if we look at actual costs and again project forward that trajectory, we would expect that our estimate at completion for dollars, our cost of our project, is going to be higher than our original budget. So what we're going to do now is calculate exactly what those values are for estimate at completion and in addition to using the, the base values that we derived of actual cost, earned value, and planned value, we'll also make use of schedule performance index and cost performance index as calculated in part two. So firstly then, how do we calculate estimate at completion for dollars, the overall forecast cost of this project? Now here's the first formula we need to know. Estimate at completion equals budget at completion divided by the cost performance index. And we would use that particular formula in a scenario where the previous variances, we expect those to continue at a similar uh, discrepant rate for the rest of the project. Notice that little C next to the cost performance index, and that means cumulative. And all that means is that when we're calculating to the end of our project here from today, we need to use cumulative values. In other words, the values from the beginning of the project up until now, and the cost and schedule performance indexes that we calculate on that, we're not going to project based on something that happened Tuesday afternoon of the first month of the, of the first week of the project, a couple of months back. We have to take account of the pattern up to date. So the little c's just mean cumulative, and in most of the questions you're going to come across in the PMP exam, what you derive will be cumulative in any rate. Okay, a second scenario with a separate formula we would use in a circumstance where those our estimates up until now have proven to be so bad, either optimistic or pessimistic, that we've got no choice but to throw that away and come up with a new estimate for the remainder of the project and add that on to our actual costs so far, our cumulative actual costs. In other words, we're rebaselining this project. A third scenario would be in a situation where there's been a blip in the road, some major anomaly, either higher or lesser than expected expense for one or more big items, everything is now settled down and we're expecting things to be smoother towards the end of the project. There's the formula that you see there. Now to calculate for the duration of our project, then this time we just use our schedule performance index instead of cost performance index. Again, the uh, cumulative version there. So we would use this if previous variances are typical and we expect those to continue. Of course, for those other two scenarios for cost, we could come up with equivalent formulas for duration for those two scenarios. So what we've just calculated then is estimates at completion for cost and duration. Something else we need to know and be able to work out is our variance at completion. And our variance at completion is going to be our budget at completion minus estimate at completion. In other words, the difference between the original estimate and the current forecast are EACs based on performance to date. To illustrate that, if that's our budget at completion for dollars there, 
and projecting our actual cost forward, our estimate at completion for dollars is higher, then the variance at completion for dollars is the difference between the two. What we're looking for is a positive value. That's good. Negative value is bad for that, uh, that particular value. If we look at our budget at completion for duration when we originally intended to end this project and look at our estimate at completion for duration that we just calculated, the difference between those two is going to be the variance at completion for duration. Okay, now let's think about estimate to complete. An estimate to complete is how much the rest of our project is going to cost. In other words, the difference between the costs so far and our estimate at completion. Here's our actual cost so far. There's our estimate at completion. So the difference between our actual cost and estimate at complete is our estimate to complete. And we, again, we have three scenarios. The first one, based on a circumstance where we expect previous variances to continue at a similar rate for the rest of the project, the same as scenario one for estimate at completion. Note, incidentally, we can simplify this formula considerably down to estimate at complete minus cumulative actual costs. Scenario two, used in a circumstance where basically we've rebaselined and come up with a new estimate for the rest of the project, well of course then estimate to complete is going to be that new estimate. And this illustrates that for all of these estimate to completes, we can actually back calculate from estimate at complete anyway. This just illustrates that a little bit more clearly. However, our third scenario we would use that somewhat more complicated formula. In that situation where there was an anomaly, a blip in the road, something cost a lot more than expected or a lot less than expected, but things have settled down. So that's the formula for that third scenario. One final formula we need to know, in addition to those, is the two complete performance index. And the two complete performance index takes budget at complete minus earned value, in other words, the work that we've got left to do, and divides that by budget at complete minus actual costs, in other words, the money that we've got left. So what that's showing you is how efficient you have to be for the rest of the project in order to complete within budget. So there we have it then. We've looked at our estimate at complete, estimate to complete, we looked at variance at completion, and the to complete performance index. So together, these three uh, videos have shown us how to derive our core uh, information that we need, plan value, earned, actual, earned value, and actual cost, how we can calculate variance and index values from that information, schedule variance, cost variance, schedule performance index, and cost performance index. And then in this video, we looked at how we can forecast, look ahead to the end of our project, estimate at complete, estimate to complete, variance at complete, and the two complete performance index. So thanks for watching all of these. I would certainly invite you to come back and look at our other uh, videos that uh, Sir Gantelot, uh, that I've posted, uh, not just in earned value and project management professional topics, but also in Microsoft Project, and basically other monsters that you can slay on a daily basis to make the world of project management more enjoyable and productive for you. I would ask you, please, if you have a moment, to visit our sponsor, Westall Murray International, a global consulting and services firm specializing in project management and also with a sub-specialization in deploying uh, enterprise project management software, specifically uh, Microsoft Project. So do, do please look at uh, the website there. Come back. Keep an eye open for additional Sir Gantelot videos. I hope you found them helpful, and thank you very much for watching them.